So in the last video, we talked about the idea of reliability, the idea of having a reliable measure, meaning that the measure gives you consistent results. But there are a number of different uh, senses, a number of different ways in which a measure can give you consistent results. So we might say that there are different, just like with different types of validity, there are different types of reliability. So let's talk about, there's, there's essentially four major types of reliability that you'll see commonly in scientific research. Uh, the first I'm going to talk about is something called, actually, let me grab a different color here, uh, test, retest, reliability. And the name is quite nice because it tells you exactly what it is. In this case, what we're doing is, well, it's reliability. If we have reliability in something, it means we're getting consistent, consistent results. Let's start there. We're getting consistent results. And we're getting consistent results in the sense of giving a test or some kind of measurement and then coming back a little while later and giving the test again and getting the same results when we retest with the same measurement. So what we mean by test, retest, reliability is that we get consistent, the measure gives us consistent results. We get consistent results from successive, you might say successive measurements. Successive meaning that we're giving one after the next. Uh, so a successive in time. Uh, so we're getting consistent results from successive measurements that are taken with the same measure, with the exact same measure. So we have a questionnaire or a test, like for example, the Beck depression inventory is a, is a widely used, widely validated, or I should say well-validated uh, measurement of depression and we if we wanted to test uh, or, or, or see what the test retest reliability of the Beck depression inventory was we would give this you know it's a series of questions we would give these questions to people at one time and then we come back and give them to the same people at a later time exactly the same questions now you might think this is what we talked about already with reliability in the sense of the IQ test. Uh, but with the IQ test, we aren't actually giving the exact same test each time we give it. And the reason for that is because if you give someone an IQ test and you come back and you a few hours later or a day later or a week later and you give them the exact same IQ test, they may remember some of the questions from the previous test. It's just like if, as a teacher, if I give you, uh, the students in my class the same test more than once with exactly the same questions, uh, they may learn what those questions are. In fact, as a side note, there's a lot of research saying that one of the best ways to learn something is to be tested on it. So this is what we call, um, what we would call testing effects. You'll see this phrase used in the research, just meaning that the test itself has an effect on the variable that it's measuring. So if I give, uh, or at least it has an effect on uh, a following a successive measure of that variable. So if I give you an IQ test, that test has a, a testing effect on the next time I give you the same test. So if we're going to do that, we don't want to use the exact same form. We want to use an equivalent or parallel form. And so that is what this next type of reliability is called. It is called parallel forms. Parallel forms reliability. Or sometimes, and I like this name a little better because I think it makes it clearer what we are talking about. It's also called sometimes called equiv equivalent forms. So parallel forms or equivalent forms reliability, just like the name says, what we're going to do is we're not going to give you the exact same version, but we're going to give you some kind of equivalent version. So let's get a sort of official definition here. Again, it's a form of reliability, so we must be talking about getting consistent results in some way. 
consistent results, all of our definitions of, of different types of reliability are going to start off the same way because that's what reliability means, giving consistent results. So consistent results, um, but when in this case, it's consistent results from, again, just like before, successive measurements. So, so far, it's the same as test, retest, successive measurements. But in this case, um, what we're talking about is uh, successive measurements taken with different, we might call different, I'm going to say uh, equivalent, different but equivalent versions of a measure. And the IQ test is a perfect example of this because the idea is it is equivalent in the sense that we are going to make sure it has uh, the same types of questions. If we have certain questions that are getting at logical reasoning or others that are getting at pattern recognition, we're going to still have questions about those, uh, you know, from those domains from, with those types of questions. Uh, those types of questions will be on all versions of the test, but the specific questions will change those up so that people can't learn from them or memorize them, and thus uh, we eliminate the the impact of testing effects. So we can see uh, if we're able to get reliable results uh, with different but equivalent forms of the same test.